we are discussing about gate 1999 ECE paper and the topic we are discussing is electronic devices this is first 5 mark question came in gate 1999 look at the diagram the diagram is a CMOS inverter and for that one within the input given is which is changing from VOL to VOH in the CMOS inverter circuit shown in the figure the input VI makes a transition from VOL to VOH VOL is 0 volts VOH is 5 volts determine the high to low propagation delay time TPHL when it is driving a load capacitance of 20 picofarad the device data given is N mass VTN threshold voltage is 1 volt KN which is mu n into COX into W by L is equal to 40 microampere per volt square and P mass VTP is minus 1 volt that is threshold voltage of P mass is minus 1 volt transconductance of P mass is 20 microampere per volt square lambda is equal to 0 lambda is channel width modulation channel length modulation parameter and it has advised that neglect body effect we need to calculate high to low propagation delay time that is TPHL first of all we should know what is meant by TPHL and later we will proceed how to calculate TPHL this is a 5 mark question so that no options will be given this is what the circuit diagram of CMOS inverter given CMOS inverter consisting of two networks one is pull down network the other is pull up network always pull down network consisting of n mass transistors pull up network consisting of p mass transistor since both the transistors are in series we expect a same current is going to be flowing whenever the transistors are on on condition current flowing through p mass is idp current flowing through n mass is idn and current flowing into the capacitor is indicated with ic So IC is equal to IDP minus IDN we can write. Whenever we apply a step input voltage that is this is a step input voltage here two inputs are shown one is ideal the other is practical. This is ideal. Ideal step input is nothing but which will be having zero rise time and zero fall time. Practically every input signal will have some finite rise time and finite fall time so that this is practical whereas it is ideal for simplicity we will always consider the ideal one only whenever we are applying an input waveform in this way which is changing from VOL to VOH as well as VOH to VOL by that time the output is going to be changes since it is inverter whenever the input is at VOL output will be at VOH whenever the input changes from VOL to VOH output will change from VOH to VOL but it takes some time while coming into the steady state of VOL during this time this is what the output voltage is going to be discharges exponentially towards VOL so the time between these two points is going to be treated as tau PHL and the time between these two points is nothing but tau P LH so we are indicating one important parameter V50% that is 50% of total voltage peak to peak so TPLH and TPHL are strictly defined like this by definition TPHL that is nothing but propagation delay from high to low is the time delay between V50% transition of rising input V50% transition of rising input this is the point and V50% transition of falling output voltage this is the point so difference between these two points are going to be indicated with dotted lines this one is going to be treated as tau PHL tau PHL is the time delay between V50% of input and V50% of falling output voltage similarly tau p lh is time delay between v50% of falling input voltage 
and V50% transition of rising output voltage. So this is what the difference. For simplicity, assume ideal input signal. That is input voltage waveform is ideal step pulse that has zero rise time and fall times. By that time we can define under this assumption tau PHL becomes the time required for the output voltage to fall from VOH to V50% level. So how much time it requires to change to fall from VOH to 50% of output voltage that is what treated as tau PHL and tau PLH becomes the time required for the output voltage to rise from VOL to the V50% voltage level. So tau PLH and tau PHL. And V50% voltage that is 50% voltage is going to be defined like this. This is from 0 onwards. This is 0 and VOL is not always 0. So that we are going with VOL as which is not equal to 0. So V50% is nothing but this is Y axis from 0 to 50 V50% which includes half of peak to peak that is nothing but half of VOL plus VOH plus 0 to VOL that is nothing but we can write like this V50% is equal to VOL plus half of VOH minus VOL by that time this is peak to peak voltage half of that one plus VOL that can be written as 1 by 2 times of VOL plus VOH 50% point then the propagation delay times are we are indicating with time T0, T1, T2, T3 so tau PHL is nothing but T1 minus T0 whereas tau PLH is nothing but T3 minus T2 and average propagation delay with respect to these two things is nothing but average of those two things actual propagation delay of the CMOS inverter is nothing but average of these two things that is tau PHL plus tau PLH by 2 we are concentrating only on tau PHL because it is asked if you are going through this analysis you will know how to analyze tau PLH also very simple so first we concentrate on tau PHL this is what the given diagram So the simplest approach for calculating the propagation delay times is based on average capacitance current during charge down and charge up respectively. So by estimating the average capacitance current during charging up as well as charging down, we can calculate the propagation delay times. So we will see how to calculate tau PHL. This is a simple capacitance equation. We know that one current flowing through the capacitor is nothing but I is equal to C into dV by dt. Here for this load capacitor we can write it as C load into dV naught by dt is equal to IC. IC is nothing but IDP minus IDN. This is a simple capacitor current equation. Now we will see how to calculate tau PHL. Consider the rising input case for a CMOS inverter. Rising input case for the CMOS inverter is nothing but simply we are changing the input signal from VOL to VOH. Assume that one input is at VOL. Whenever input is at VOL by that time PMOS will be in the on condition and NMOS will be in the off condition. Under steady state whenever V input is at VOL the capacitor charges through this PMOS and it is going to be obtaining towards V0 will become VOH. Maximum voltage stored by this capacitor is nothing but 5 volts that will be treated as VOH. So whenever V input is VOL by that time V0 is at VOH. So we are assuming that one initially under steady state before transition at the input side output voltage is assumed to be equal to VOH. Now the input voltage switches from low to high that is VOL to VOH by that time P mass turning towards on to off as well as N mass turning towards off to on 
that is what happens when the input switches from low to high voltage so the nmos transistor is turned on and it starts to discharge the load capacitance at the same time pmos transistor is switched off that is idp drain current of pmos is equal to zero this is what the equivalent circuit during transition at the input side from vol to voh so only nmos transistor is under consideration and this is load capacitor this load capacitor previously it was at voh that now voh is going to be discharging through this nmos so this word the capacitor current equation ic is equal to c load into dv not by dt dv out by dt ic is nothing but idp minus idn but pmos is going to be switched off that's why idp is zero so we can write the equation as c load into dv out by dt is equal to minus id dv out by dt is nothing but we can calculate so from this equation dv out by dt whenever we are applying a rising input from vol to voh output is dropping so you can calculate change in output voltage with respect to time with across any two points just now we told that one nmos transistor is coming from off to on condition whenever input is changing from vol to voh by the time nmos initially it will be in saturation region later it comes into active region but during tphl time it will be most of the time in saturation region so for simplicity we are going with nmos transistor is in saturation and during that region we are going to calculate d out dv out by dt if strictly we are going to follow if we strictly follows by that time we must take the average of id current in saturation plus id current in linear region but for simplicity we will always go with saturation region for simplicity assume the nmos transistor operating in saturation so the drain current can be written as kn by 2 into v in minus vt whole square v input is nothing but voh kn by 2 into voh minus vtn whole square because input signal is at now voh this is so this is what the already we have seen the capacitor current equation c load into dv out by dt is equal to minus idn and substitute idn under saturation region so that will become c load into d dv out by dt can be written as voh minus v50% divided by 0 minus tphl that is nothing but tphl itself minus tphl we are writing zero we are not indicating at t is equal to zero output voltage voh at tphl output voltage is 50 percent that is equal to id equation we are writing kn into w by ln into voh minus vt whole square where voh is given as 5 volts vol is given as 0 volts cul load capacitance is 20 pico farad v50 percent is nothing but half of voh plus vol that is nothing but 2.5 volts substitute these values cul is 20 pico farad voh is 5 v50 percent is 2.5 5 minus 2.5 divided by tphl minus minus get cancels and here it is kn into w by l is totally given as 40 by 40 and it is by 2 sorry here mistaken here by 2 is there so by 2 have to write micro ampere per volt square into 5 minus 1 whole square 20 pico farad into 2.5 divided by tphl into 20 into 16 so 2 phl after um, simplification it will be equal to 0.156 microseconds so propagation delay from high to low transition at the output takes 0.156 microseconds so only that mm, small mistake is going to be over here here kn by 2 it is not kn okay thank you